Hello everybody, Glass Half Dead here, doing a... It's... Um, okay, I don't want this to be full-on man reads book, okay? So I'm not going to read everything here word to word for you, that's going to take way too long. But obviously I've been playing this for a week, I've talked to playtesters who've been playing it for like a year or whatever. So, hopefully I can give a little bit of insight here. Obviously you don't need to see me, you just get my beautiful hand modelling techniques. A couple of things before we crack this bad boy open. First things first. This is called coil binding. It means that I can just whip it open, we can get a nice clear view without any strain. If you want to coil bind your own book, do note that coil binding is easier to find than spiral binding. All I did was I typed in coil binding book near me into Google. I found somewhere that was like 15 minutes away. It cost me two pounds to get this done. Bargain. Also, to the side, I have dice. At some point, we're going to roll them so that I can give you a few example of, examples of how rolling works. Okay. Oh, uh, got some tea. Let's do this. For anybody wondering, this is going to be a very, uh, you know, look, if you're dying to know the rules, you can just crack this. Screenshots, they're all yours, I guess, uh, if that's what you want to do. I'm not going to go through all of this front matter, this is all, uh, what's it called? Fluff. There is one thing I want to point out, which I have to find the page for. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try and give you like actual insights into some of the rules, but I know that people that are going to watch this, they just want those core rules, they don't want anything else, so that's why we're ignoring this. If you are watching this like a month after the game releases, this isn't, this isn't for you, really. Undoubtedly, there are already videos out that go over all of this way more concisely than I'm going to go over it. Okay. Uh, Drakari, notice they have racks. Necrons, notice they have Triarch Praetorians. Why do I point these two models out? Because everything else in this book we have already seen, we know that they exist in the game from the uh, Kill Team website. These are all like listed models. Those two models, the Praetorians and the Racks, are models that we haven't seen on there. We don't really know what that means. Uh, in the old kill team, they were considered to be um, elites. They released with elites. So presumably, therefore, elites are coming. But why they only decided to include those two in the book? No clue. Right, let's start with the core rules, old boys. Okay, and girls. Right, uh... These things. I have mine here. I've painted them. Cool. One side gold, one side silver. If you're going to do this, I would just recommend that when you get to your little, uh, the actual like measurement things, you color them white, red, blue, and black. The only reason I say this is because uh, in my talks with a play tester, they pointed out that although we were sold this as, you know, we saw this and we said, oh, okay, so triangle is one, uh, circle is two, square is three, pentagon is six, and that's how this book says it. Apparently the playtesters were using the colours. So they said black is one, two is, uh, white is two, blue is three, red is six. Okay, we don't need to look at those again. Those can go away. Is there anything else to look at here? Not really. Um... This just explains some real, you know, these are the real basics, right? I mean, anybody watching this video knows all of this. We don't really need to watch again. Like, it, it explains what a D6 is, you know? Uh, we get all of this. Again, we already know how to read a data card. The only thing I would possibly add is engagement rate. Are these two bits, you know, this is very new with uh, 40K and Games Workshop. You probably want to read all of these little aside boxes. They normally include some sort of, like, actual... Yeah, you need to know this. So engagement range is always uh, one inch. Oh, sorry, sorry, I did want to add. Having read the full rules, you don't need these. There you go, I just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, you can use a tape measure. The only time this might possibly come into, like I don't think these are bad, to be clear. You know, these, these are good little tools. But you don't need them, need them to play the game, you can just use a tape measure, it's fine. Uh, the only, like, so when we get to the movement, it will come up, uh, and I'll talk about it then, I suppose. Cool. Uh, modifying characteristics. Uh, so note that an APL, 
this bad boy here can only ever be modified up or down by one. There you go. Everything else, oh, a six is always a hit and a one is always a miss. There you go. That's basically modifying characteristics. Uh, there's no multiplication, so that never, you know, it's never double your strength or double your weapon skill. So it doesn't matter. We don't need to worry about that like they do in 40k and last kill team. Here we go. Battle structure, initiative, strategy, firefight. Initiative is literally uh, ready your guys, who's going first. That's it. I do want to point out, we're, we'll get to this later, but determine initiative. This isn't a roll off. There's actually a game mechanic that decides who goes first. So we get to that when we get to that, but that's a whole thing. Strategy. Essentially, the way strategy works here is you generate a CP. You always get one CP, having your leader alive doesn't make any difference. However, having a leader does mean that you start the game with two extra CP. So you start the game with two CP, and as soon as you begin a strategy phase, you get a third, so you have three CP. It's possible there will be ploys that you can play before you generate your first command point, so you only actually start with two, but um, I haven't read them enough to know if that's the case. Uh, you then play your strategic ploys. We'll talk about this later. And you have a target reveal. Uh, this is uh, typically for your, not your ploys, but your tack ops, so your secondary objectives if you're trying to, you know, you need a target. Command reroll. I have a whole video coming out about that. But do note that use this tactical ploy after rolling one of your attack dice or defense dice, you can reroll that dice. So this is now way, way less of an issue in the game. In fact, to the point that I would say you will probably never use this. All of the tactical ploys that we've seen so far are better than a command reroll. And I think thumbs up, because this is such a boring thing to do. It was a real flaw of the last game of Kill Team that this was the best thing you could ever do, you know? Right. Firefight phase. Again, I'm not going to read this out loud. Just do note that these are super important. These define the entire game. So a conceal order, an engage order, Ready, activated, ready, activated. Uh, do note, we do get these. These are plus and minus one action points. Those are just to, uh, you can keep them there so that you know for when you need to activate that model if they're plus or minus one. And do note that, for example, with stun or any other action that will give them a plus or minus to their APL, that lasts, as it says right here, that lasts until they are next activated. So either until the end of their current activation or until they are next activated. So just because you flip a turning point and that doesn't remove anything, all the turning point does is ready your models again. If they have a plus or minus to APL, that stays until they are activated. Overwatch, uh, so Overwatch is really big. We'll talk about that in a moment, but Overwatch is essentially a way of mitigating horde spam, so for example custodies, let's say you're taking your two plus your whatever, um, or however many you can take, uh, possibly four, then obviously you're at a huge disadvantage numbers wise. Overwatch, each turning point, once you have fully activated all of your models, it then, and you are no longer able to activate your models, when it comes to your potential activation, so your enemy has activated it goes to you, you have no models to activate, you can then choose to do an overwatch. Uh, this is just a free a free shoot, essentially. Each model in your team can only do it once, uh, per turning point. Uh, it's no CP, it's just an action you can do. Um, and that's it. Uh, you'll be at minus one to hit though. You get actions, cool, cool. Normal moves, um, there's not really much to say about this. Uh, it, you know, this, okay, so, sorry, sorry. The firefight phase. I should have said, this is 95% of the game. These two bits, tiny. This is the game right here, the firefight phase. So we're going to be basically looking at the firefight phase for the next half hour. Uh, normal move, right. Uh, I suppose the only thing to note here, and it's kind of related to the everything being measured in, in these, right, is that everything is measured in a, in a whole inch. So even if you only want to move half an inch, that still takes up one full inch. Uh, so if you want to, as it, as it shows quite here, 
If you're going around a corner and you need to move half an inch to clear your base around that corner, that still takes up one inch. You don't get to then move five and a half inches down the straight. Essentially, you've moved the full inch. Now you go all the way. Cool. A charge. So notable things about charge. There's two things. Firstly, a charge, because we haven't had this uh, said yet on, on Warcom. Charge uh, essentially is your move characteristic plus circle. So plus an extra two inches. So for most people, that's going to give you an eight inch charge instead of a six inch move. The other thing to note is that as soon as you enter an enemy's engagement range, you are kind of lo you are locked into their engagement range. That one inch triangle uh, area around them, you cannot leave that engagement range unless you have uh, fly. If you have fly, you can. So for example, if you've got a, a bunch of guys set up and you've got a sniper at the back, and your opponent really wants to get to the sniper, they're going to have to go around fully those two models. So that's going to be really hard to do unless you have fly fullback. Uh, yep, that's just two AP, as we see. So it's the only normal action that costs two AP. It just lets you move out of engagement range. Cool. Dash, finally. Finally, we know what dash means. It's uh, a three, three inch move. Um, oh, do note that all of these, you know, two circle, three inch move, whatever, uh, blue, blue move, uh, they can all be measured at any increment of one inch. Uh, there you go. So it's not like you have to move a three inch straight line or just two inches. You can move triangle, 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 that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, so that's a dash. Uh, and that will come up very soon in climbing, but we're not there yet. Pass. A pass is just a way for you to not activate a model. There you go. So, and this is the only action that you can do more than once. So if you just don't want to activate, you just use pass twice. You pass. Overwatch. I've already explained Overwatch. Pick up that so that you can pick up objectives and such. Which obviously will be important. Shoot. Okay. Ooh. Okay, time for a tea set. Every, everybody good? Everybody ready for this? I'm not going to read this to you. No, I'm kidding, okay. So, uh, I'm not going to read it to you. Very essentially, is there anything that's relevant here? Okay, so, uh, what do we need to do? Obviously, they do have their little diagrams and, and examples here. But let's say that you are an attacker, and you roll four dice, and your defender, because we want a good example, also rolls four dice, right? Uh, in the, uh, you know what, literally no, nobody has, I'm, I'm going to use three because that's way more accurate. Uh, right, so what do we need to think about? So one of the big issues here, uh, it's not an issue, sorry, one of the big things here is that a critical defence, if we roll a six, cancels a critical hit, okay? So those two can cancel each other out. Uh, or... You can have two regular saves, anything, and they can cancel out one crit. Okay, so that's nice and easy. A crit for a crit, or two normals for a crit. Otherwise, it's just uh, you know, a normal for a normal. Now, we do need to understand very quickly the order of operations, because this is going to come up quite often in um, when you're trying to figure things out. As soon as you roll your dice, Let's say we need fours, that means we get two saves, two fails. As soon as they're rolled, before anything else happens, these are considered to be successful and they are retained. Okay, that's the word you need to remember. They are retained immediately. As soon as they're rolled, you retain two saves, you discard two fails. That's important. Likewise over here, as soon as they're rolled, you have failed two, you discard two, you have successfully saved one, and you retain one. Because at some point when it comes to wording, you need to know at what point you retain something. This comes up with special rules quite often, which we will cover at the back of the book. There you go. That's essentially it uh, for this. Everything else is very obvious. Just keep in mind when something is retained and uh, that crits can 
save a crit and that two normals can save a crit. Because, once we get over to fight, oh sorry, sorry, there's something very important here as well. The very first paragraph. If you have a conceal order, you cannot shoot. There you go. <clears throat> oh, actually also, it's very important over here. Uh, where's the action? Because this is also very relevant. Charge. Uh, if you have a conceal order, you cannot charge. You can still fight if you're charged, but you cannot make a charge uh, if you have a conceal order. This means the only way to fight with a charge, or to engage the fight either with a shoot or a charge, is to have an engage order. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but just keep in mind that the orders, conceal and engage, are super key to how this entire game plays. Fight. Now fight is a little, oh sorry, also one more thing, for both shoot and fight, you can go into this game kitted out, or well, theoretically you could, you can't, but you could go into this game kitted out as an absolute mad lad, as, as a doom marine, right, with, with eight weapons equipped. Every time you do an action, which you can only do once per uh, turn, once per turning point, whatever, uh, once you do an action, you you select one weapon to shoot. That's how it is. Even if you have a combi weapon, whatever it is, you select one weapon. Okay. Uh, right. The only difference now, oh, there's two differences. Sorry, <laughs> uh, is that note here. Okay. Let's roll roll some dice. Four and four. So now, obviously, we're not rolling our defense dice. We're rolling uh, our attack dice for our weapons. Okay. Well, this hasn't worked for me. So I'm going to change this dice to a six. Cool. There you go. So uh, this guy here, we discard two, we retain two. One of them is a crit. Okay. Here, we discard. Uh, I don't know. One, two. I guess we save two. Now, in the last shooting phase, we would we could have put these and discarded the crit, but that's not how this works. So in combat, you cannot pile up your uh, attack dice, your parry dice, to stop a critical. So these two dice, one of them would take away that success, and the other one would only have to be used for attack. It couldn't defend this, and likewise if you still had that, you couldn't defend it. There you go. That's the only difference. So crits, uh, so two, two normals cannot save a crit in combat. There we go. There's also combat support. You can um, pile up, uh, you can pile on, whatever whatever we want to say, for combat support. Uh, every time, it goes over it quite well here. Uh, I would suggest we just read this. That's the best way to figure this out. But combat support, uh, the more models you have in engagement range with the enemy model you're fighting, but that are not also in combat or in engagement range of another enemy model uh, allows you to fight. There you go. Uh, or, sorry, allows you to fight. Uh, gives you plus one to your weapon skill. Uh, and it is... Uh, what's the word? The more the better. <laughs> cumulative, cumulative, that's the word. Like the cloud, cumulus. No, cumulative. Uh, so if you have, you know, a regular guardsman that's going to be hitting on fours or whatever. If you've got three other guys in there, you're hitting on twos. But obviously one is always a fail. Wounds and damage, uh, once, we, we all know this one I think, once you're below half health, if an operative has fewer than half of its wounds remaining, it's injured, you just give it a little injured token, uh, and it's minus one, uh, minus circle, minus two inches from its move, um, and the ballistic skill web skill removed by one, or lower by one. Objective markers and tokens, the default here is that if you are within two inches, so circle from the center, okay, of the thing, you are able to control it. The way you control it is who has more APL within the controlling radius of it, radius, God, whatever it's called, but the controlling area of it uh, controls it. So obviously, if you've got a custodian on there who we know has four APL, he's going to be just as good as two regular Krieg, but if you have a sixth or a third, then they're controlled. But do note that when it comes to these objectives, these aren't always two inches. Like, by default, they are. So if the mission doesn't say, oh, and by the way, this is how this is uh, 
picked up or activated or whatever, then it's two inches. But quite often in the match play missions, it will actually be, um, what will it be? Like one inch because you need to pick, you need to be within one inch to pick it up. And it's measured from the center, not the, not the edges. Okay, now when it comes to line of sight, um, I'm not gonna say much because actually tomorrow I have a full, highly edited, you know, super technical uh, video coming out that will cover all of this. It's gonna give you multiple examples. Um, it's gonna be featuring Daka Boy as our lead protagonist as he runs through a training course. So I'll show you everything, okay? Just know that all of this is absolutely key to how the game plays and it's how uh, engage and conceal orders really affect the game. Essentially, if you have a conceal order, which is something that you set at the beginning of each round, you can't be shot unless there are special abilities, but you also cannot shoot and you cannot charge. But if you have an engage order, you can shoot, you can charge, but you can also be shot. There you go. Uh, right, that's kind of like the absolute basic core rules sorted, okay? We now come to kind of the little additional bits. So we're talking about terrain. Vantage point, again, I cover that tomorrow. But also, we already know what vantage point is with the Warcom articles. Traverse, we already know this. If you go over a piece of, you know, a barrier or whatever, anything that is, um, it, it defines it, I think. Uh, anything under two inches. Uh, wait, is it two inches? I can't remember. It tells us, probably. Jump, uh, so this is a thing. Uh, you can jump three inches. It's not an additional AP, it's not an action, it's just part of your normal move. You can jump three inches horizontal, two inches vertical, which means everybody in this game has a really high vertical. They should all be basketball players, probably, but whatever. Um, oh yes, uh, so just the way jump works is you you still need, like, you don't teleport. You don't move to the edge, to within one inch of the edge and then teleport three inches. You still need to have that three inches as part of your available movement. It's just you're able to move over an area where there isn't actually terrain. Climb. So this is where a little bit uh, you you have to accept that you are moving a full amount of either one or two or three or whatever it is. So uh, it explains it all very well here, but basically, if you are within one inch of the bottom of a piece of terrain. It, it does apply, you can climb anything. There doesn't need to be a ladder there, you can climb a wall. Uh, if you're within an inch, you then move two inches up, and then two inches in. So you can't, even though you have a three circle move, six inch move, you cannot move up three. That's a lie, you can, sorry. Uh, but for one action point, you could move up two, and then you use the final third of your movement to move on top of the terrain. So your maximum climb distance for one AP is only four inches. Because then your the other two, the six inches, has to be standing on there, okay? Now, some of you may have just seen the recent Necron Warrior a data card which has a movement of two. So, by the same rule, the Necron Warriors, or anything with two movement, can only climb two because they will then need that second to move onto the terrain. Now that's not very good. But for one AP, that's correct. I'm, I'm not misreading that, that is how it works. However, you can use a second action point. Now you can never move twice, but you can use a second action point to dash. This means a Necron Warrior for two AP could move their two, one, two, and then use their next action point, dash, to get onto there. There you go. Oh, you know what? I completely forgot to say one of the things. Um, they said it right at the beginning, I think page 60 if I recall. Here we go. Sorry, I need to quickly add this. I should I should have said this earlier. Uh, a free action. And I'm going to say this because there was a, a lot of questions about the DACA dash that the DACA boy can do. Uh, free actions. Note that when you have an action that allows you to do two actions, you know, DACA dash, uh, the way it's phrased is very clearly written here. 
The operative would still count as performing the action for all rules purposes. For example, if it performed it during its activation, it would not be able to perform the action again during that activation. So the actions allowed within that rule, the special rule, still have, like, you still have to be legal to do them. So you're not making two moves, you're not making two shoots. You just get to do them both for some reason. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, falling, you guys can read that, I don't, you know, uh, whatever. You can fall a bit further than you can climb for less, there you go. Oh, and uh, flying is exactly what we expect, just don't count the vertical distance. Uh, I would say quite interesting here is that notice they say this is an ideal setup, this isn't. In fact, they actually say don't use this. <laughs> so I think that this is actually how most people would naturally set up their board. You've got some nice chunky bits of, you know, cool looking ruins, you put them on the outside. And they're saying no, no, don't do that. Uh, you know, make it a little bit more asymmetrical. Give people options on either sides of the board. Because this actually isn't brilliant for gameplay, it's going to encourage people to camp and blah blah blah. Okay. Then there's just a whole bunch of terrain. We're just going to uh, fly through this. Uh, where have they put the... Oh, did I just... Com oh, yeah, yeah, okay. This is just telling you how th certain things should be set up. Uh, this is all related to the thing that I completely skipped over, which is the heavy and light cover whether things are obscuring, visible, cover, etc. That's all covered in tomorrow's video. Okay. Open play, I'm going to skip through these nice and quickly. Be especially open play, it's literally one thing, which is just kind of GW's official way of saying, hey, do what you want. That's fine. I will just quickly add here, match roster. Do note, selectable keyword, Krieg. So no longer can we have a roster with like Blood Angels and Space Wolves and Salamanders on it. You have to select the keyword up there. The whole roster will be one thing. Yeah. And as we already know, you put the equipment, that, uh, sorry, you put the war gear there, so their weapon, but you do not put the equipment there. That gets picked, picked later. Match play mission sequence. Okay. This is really important actually. So I'm going to have a sip of my tea. All right. I would say that when you are learning the game, you're sat there with your opponent, open this, follow it step by step. You have to do everything before you play the game, okay? Blah, blah, blah. Note that at the point you are selecting your equipment, you already know the secondaries. You already know who you're playing against. You already know the mission somewhere. Kill zone. Yeah. Cool. Then you go over to um, blah, 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 deployment, scouting. Hmm, look at this. Match play, there's a scouting sequence. This is now completely different. Do not. <laughs> this is actually really important. So, this is 100% part of match play. You cannot get rid of it. You need to know the scouting phase. I, again, I would highly recommend that no doubt someone's going to release a cheat sheet. I think GW actually has one in the works. Uh, the One of the playtesters handed theirs in and said, and GW said, oh, that's really good. We're going to GWify it, make it look cool, and we, we'll release that. So don't know when, but hopefully. Uh, basically, you can choose three things. Uh, and then depending on which one you choose, it allows you to do a different thing. So set up an additional barricade. Um select uh change in the first turning point change one of your orders from conceal to engage or engage to conceal or perform a free dash action with one octave the way you pick this is both operatives oh, players sorry uh have a d3 in their hand right you hold it behind your back you select the d3 you want you go ahead you slam it down on the table boom i've picked a two Boom, I've picked a one, right? Uh, again, you are picking this specifically. You're not rolling. This is just how it is uh, now. And But then, this is what's defining who goes first, okay? So if you pick fortify, you go before. Oh, man. Uh, it says up here, this is how you begin the battle. If one player selected fortify, and the other selected infiltrate, the former decides, yeah, okay. So 
if you if one goes before two, two goes before three, three goes before one. There you go. That's how that works. So I assume there's going to be quite a little, quite a bit of interesting stuff like back and forth going on here. Um, I also assume at some point we're all going to figure out actually, you know what, infiltrates easily the best because it lets you change an order, uh, which I believe is really strong. But again, I'm still pretty new, so like maybe it's not. Uh, however, if you do both pick the same, then it's I, I think it's not just a roll off. Yeah, the attacker decides who has the initiative. So at no point do you roll off for who goes first, which is pretty cool. And then you uh, spec ops narrative play. I'm not going to talk about this too much. It seems cool. That's all I can say. You know, they've they've lined it all out. Oh, I completely forgot to talk about the artwork. The artwork looks cool, but I don't know what it's supposed to represent. I assume it's harkening back to the way artwork used to be done for like some sort of traditional comic book style thing. Almost, I mean, it almost looks a little bit Frank Miller to me. Not that I'm a, an expert on comic books, I must say, but you know, I'm thinking Sin City, very uh, monochrome with the occasional splash of colour. But he never really did anything that was like military sci-fi, so whatever uh, anyway yeah there's a whole bunch of stuff there's a whole bunch of stuff it's all good lovely excellent cool I'm not going to talk about this because I don't really know but it's here if you want to see it very funky uh, you know these are all like these are all uh, sorry you know these these are the campaigns to be clear like there's 10 campaigns you can do so you go ahead and figure that out uh, and then it does give you a narrative play mission sequence as well I'm not actually sure what the difference is because I haven't read it. But at some point I will. Like I might actually go ahead and do a a narrative campaign. It, you know, it looks super cool. Like maybe I want to build up my own base, and that could be part of a hobby project where I actually physically build the base as well. Here, guys, is how your first tournaments are going to work. Table one, table two, table three. Roll a D three. That gives you table one, table two, table three. Roll another D3, loot and salvage, consecration, you know, there you go. So you can, for some reason, already very heavily mixed. Nine competitive play missions. Oh, we're going to need another, we're going to need a sip, sip of tea. Don't worry, we've just got this left and then the USRs at the end. Again, I'm not going to cover all of this. The main thing I want to say is that all nine of the missions not only have a different deployment zone and a different objective setup do note that uh, you know in sticking with their theme everything is set up using these so you still don't you still don't need a tape measure although it might be easier <laughs> but they're all set up like that uh, what was the other thing oh yeah so the actual primary is different for every single one there you go so all nine missions, you're doing something slightly different, whether you're capturing an objective or you're holding it or whatever. OK, and that's on top of all of your tactical ops. So tac ops, tactical operations. These are your secondaries. These up here are the archetypes, seek destroy, security, infiltration and recon. Four archetypes. OK, and you're about to see in the next video that goes up on my channel, if you haven't already watched it. You shouldn't have this. Should, you should watch this before that. Uh, each team will have access to uh, however many of these. And it, it does say in the uh, how to start the game, it says if you have access to potentially taking multiple, you pick one. So, you know, whatever. I think the Krieg have access to both security and seek and destroy or something like that. You pick one and you say, OK, these guys are going to be security this game. Um, and I believe at the beginning of the TAC Ops roster, TAC, the competitive roster, sorry, to use the correct terminology whilst trying to explain things, shouldn't I? Hold on, guys. This is totally worth me going all the way back here. Narrative. No, it's not because I can't find it. Uh, you have to just say which archetype your team is taking for the whole of the, of the competitive game. So if you go to a tournament, 
you will be playing the same six, you'll be picking from the same six every time. Hold on. Right, let's figure this out, okay? Let's pick these six security cards. I'm going to show you how it's done, okay? And, well, oops. <laughs> right. fair enough, I don't know where those are. You also have access to three faction-specific secondaries. So you take your six, uh, you can only have a deck of six though, so you might take three of these out and then put in... Okay, hold on, I'll go find them. I'll go find them. So, uh, somewhere in here, here we go, one, two, three. So these are obviously the generic cards. You can say, actually, I, I really like, uh, for, for my faction, these two, but I don't like that third one, so I'll put in my security uh, third as well. So I've got, I've decided to take two faction ones, two, th four security ones. You then take them, you give them a nice little shuffle, whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's only six cards, how, how you know. Uh, you then draw two. Flip them. What have we got? Okay, I like central control. So I'm going to put damage limitation. That's gone. It's nothing to me. It's my ex. It's my mental health. It's gone. It's destroyed. You draw the next two. Faction, seize ground. I like the faction. I'll keep that. Put that to the side. Final two. Obviously, I'm about the faction one again. Plant banner. It's gone. It's dead to me. And these will be your secondary objectives for the game. And that's how that works. There you go. Whoa. Okay, so Tac Ops, um, I'm not going to talk about what's good, what's bad. Because I don't know. And obviously it's going to, you know, this requires a deeper, like, rundown. Which I will do at some point. Um, but, like, obviously it depends on which faction you're playing, which models you're taking, like, yeah. And finally, we get to the USRs. If my book's going to open. Ha ha. So, I'm not going to read all of these, I'm kind of just holding it open whilst you guys look at it, I think. Um, is there anything to say? I don't think so. Oh yes, there is actually, there is. Definitely, so... I, I asked this of the playtester because I just really wanted to make sure. There are two things I can tell you about this that I think are quite important. First, I'm going to have a sip of my tea. Lovely. Okay. We need to know a few things. Wh which are they? Where have they gone? Invon saves. I'll tell you something about that. And piercing. Boom. Okay. Invon saves and piercing. Piercing is literally armor piercing. Um. That, there you go. Piercing is just armor piercing on a crit, and I ask the places, why didn't you just, on the crit of the special rule, you know, for every weapon, why did, why not just put AP1 or AP2, whatever it is? And he didn't have a re he couldn't figure it out. He was just like, yeah, I probably should have done that, actually. So, yeah, there you go. Just keep in mind, piercing is just the way that they write the critical rule for AP. Invol save. Now, this is something I specifically asked, because I wanted to make sure... The way Invon saves are played is that if the enemy has an AP on its weapon, the way it works, okay, so you roll your, your die, no, hold on, let's see, so uh, you get attacked by a weapon with, in, with AP, which normally would mean that in your defense dice pool, AP 1 means you remove 1 dice. You don't get to roll it, it's gone. AP2, you remove 2. AP3, you remove 3. You can't roll any of them. So do note that that means it's not like you roll 3 and then they have an AP of 1 so you discard 1. Because then obviously you would always discard a, a specific thing or whatever. But equally, remember what I was talking about earlier when I was talking about retaining saves. You don't get to roll them because as soon as they're rolled you would retain them. Doesn't happen. You simply do not roll a dice. Here's the important thing. You've got your three defense. They have AP on their gun. Let's say it's AP one. One's removed. Cool. But what if you have an invuln save? Do you select one dice and that one needs to roll the invuln number and the others? 
need to roll the standard save? No. I'd asked. I double checked. If they have AP on their weapon, all of your defense dice need to roll your invulnerable save. I don't need to say any more than that. That's incredibly obvious. So there you go. All right. <laughs> yeah. This, this video is long enough. Let's not uh, dally anymore. Cool. All right. There we go. And that, sirs, is the Kill Team Core rulebook. I hope you found this useful. I hope that I managed to give you a little bit of guidance, more than just, you know, man read book. Um, I mean, uh, hey, I love man read book content. Uh, as, as, as You know, that's kind of said as, as an insult, but genuinely, like um, Ash from Gorilla Miniature Games, when he does them, I remember when he did his, uh, his elite, like, man read book, I was on his channel for that entire week of pre-order, freezing it on different points in the video because I, I was just really excited for it. As silly as it is, I think it is genuinely good content for those that are really into the game. So there you go. So this is my Man Reads book. I hope that I've managed to be give a little bit of insight into some of the nuances of the rules. Um, and I hope that it hasn't been too much of a strain just, uh, you know, having to go through 50 minutes of me slowly talking and saying, um, too much. Oh. If you're a subscriber to my channel, I'd like to give you a big double below. It's a little bit late. You know, it's a little bit late. I'm going to give you that one, guys. But, you know, I'm just too excited for the core rulebook. And if you've made it to the end of the video, I'd like to give you a big triple below genuinely helps my channel. Uh, there you go. All right. Well, thank you guys. Um, I hope this has been good for you. All right. Bye.